Hello everybody and welcome back to another, well, quite large creation in Kerbal Space program. What you see here is the EVE 3. This is a very special vehicle designed to go to EVE, deliver three Kerbals to the surface and return them safely back home. What is special about this is not only its size, it measures 130 meters almost on the launch pad and weighs 8,800 tons. Uh, well, the special thing about this is I decided to make something without any nuclear engines. Usually when you have to haul big payloads through the galaxy or the solar system in Kerbal Space Program rather, then you very often rely on that nuclear engine, the NERV. And I thought, well, with the new parts that came with the Making History expansion, maybe we could skip those for such an undertaking. And while we watch the ascent, we also watch some stage separations going on. I decided to launch at morning because morning visuals are usually the best visuals. And yeah, another sort of clean stage separation going on over here. Alright, the vehicle is comprised of a lot of those 5 meter diameter parts. That helps reduce part count, which is already at a whopping 801. And here we go, we have another stage separation and what I really like are those panels that uh, fly away and covered those solid rocket motors. Yeah, now we're talking, we're on our final boost stage and we're heading up towards our circularization burn. Look at those vector engines wiggling around. And the fairings are gone, this is the lander that is going to uh, EVE's surface. And... Yeah... So that happened... AGAIN! AGAIN! Again. Okay, you might have noticed that this vehicle looks a bit different than what I have launched a few seconds earlier. Well, the reason being is that the fairing parts in Kerbal Space Program, ever since they've been introduced almost three years ago or something like that, they are still buggy as hell. And every time I manage to successfully get that thing into orbit, yeah, sometime later the fairing just pop decided to break and pop off the rocket. So I had to design it completely new, well not completely new, but without this dual fairing design. And it's now a bit more boring, I would say, but at least it's working. I think if I would have Kerbal Joint Reinforcement installed, then this would not be a problem. But that mod is not available yet for KSP 1.4.3, which I am using here. Anyhow, what you're seeing here is the separation of the first payload, or rather the second, because the first one is now separating. At least the first one that we're getting onto the surface. And yeah, I think I've now confused you completely, which was not my intention. What you're seeing here is the descent of the lander, or rather the return vehicle. So we have separated our little uh, booster. Well, booster, it's sort of a small stage that helped us descend or initiate this descent burn. And the rest is done completely by aerodynamics. And we're flipping, not good. Thankfully, we've already been through quite a lot of atmosphere, so we didn't have that high of a velocity to make things explode. But we are now in quite of something of a tumble. And this looks spectacularly from the inside. Look at Bill, he's fascinated by all those lights. Like a deer looking into headlights at night. Let's hope his survival chances are a bit higher. Alright, parachutes are out. And things explode. 
loaded. That was not as clean as I intended. Anyhow, nothing that I would need later on is gone. So all of those drills and uh, refineries are working, apparently, or at least attached still. This return vehicle is also quite, well, not a little tiny thing. It's uh, 96 tons as you see it here without any fuel inside except for a tiny bit in those boosters on the side to slow the descent because it does not have any landing gear. We're relying on our engine bells to uh, hold this thing upright. And upright it is, which is a good thing. Oh yeah, we have lost our parachute thingies. And through the magic of switching vessels, they disappeared! Woohoo! Okay, we have now engaged everything. We have engaged the radiators, we have engaged our solar panels and the drills, and we're now producing fuel for our return. And what just exploded here was just a decoupler, which I really don't need. But since this is also tumbling a lot, I was a bit scared that the ferry could explode. If you look at the left hand corner, it's overheating almost completely. Thankfully, it didn't. So, yeah, at least not in this iteration. There may or may not have been some instances of where this thing disintegrated completely. Anyhow, this is a rover. Why is there a rover? Well, I thought, since that fuel gathering process takes a lot of time, and Jab and Bob already had enough of Bill by uh, being stuck with him for almost a year inside those uh, capsules on board the Eve-3 ship, I decided that Jab and Bob have a sort of little rove around Eve and gather a bit of science and yeah, generally have some fun without Bill. Because Bill is just there to make the fuel generation process more efficient. Okay, Rover has landed. We don't need those descent boosters anymore. And yeah, now we're driving towards the rocket and across some nice little terrain. And yeah, this is actually quite, quite a nice ride. It handles great, it's quite stable. And yeah, this was a 90 km drive, which I decided to cut from the video because it's boring! Yay, now we are here at the rocket, our return vehicle. So Jebediah takes the lead, he's going to climb those ladders and get in there. Okay, this is quite the climb. Also, if you consider uh, Eve's higher gravity, then that's quite that's quite the athletic feat to get out there or get up there rather. Okay, Bob has got the science that we took, which we really don't need because we already explored Eve in the past. Look at that! That's a beautiful picture with the sun up there. Nice. All right. This was a climb of about 18 meters, so yeah, good on you, Jeb and Bob. All right, we're now flying away. And we dropped our first drop tanks, we dropped our second drop tanks, and I decided, or I tried to keep the thrust to weight ratio way below two, somewhere between 1.7 and 1.8, if possible because Eve's atmosphere is so dense that you don't want to push it too hard in the lower regions. Otherwise, the atmospheric pressure is going to keep you down and you're going to burn more fuel than necessary. And yeah, this entire thing would not work. Anyhow, this is designed to possibly launch from sea level, but I was now starting from, I think, somewhere around a thousand meters above sea level, so Almost sea level, you could say. Okay, this here is now up, 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 up in the atmosphere, very high up. Looks almost like a complete rocket now without all the boosters attached. But we still have one stage left and there it is. Looking at the readouts of Kerbal Engineer, 
we can see that we have way enough delta V to make our uh, circularization burn later on. And also enough of a margin to do our rendezvous with the EVE 3 mothership. I did not have any fancy names for the lander or the ship in separate, this is just the EVE 3 mission. Or you could call it the No Nuke mission. The Anti-Nuclear Proliferation mission. Or is it proliferation? I don't know. I don't really know what that word means, I have to look it up. I once knew what that meant, but I forgot. We have our encounter set up, and there it is! Hello, ship! So we're getting closer in there, and then we have to ditch that booster, because we don't need it anymore, we just need the capsule. Please don't crash into the ship, we need that to get home. Okay, this was maybe a bit too much going backwards, but yeah, we have enough monopropellants in that capsule to make the dock. Okay, here we go, closing in, and boom, and let's grab onto that capsule, even though it's just visual and not really necessary, I think it's a nice touch to have those elevons grab onto the, the main capsule to get the crew back. Alright, we have our crew quarters on the side of the rocket so that Jab, Bob and Bill can have their separate cabins if they so desire. Well, it is a journey of more than a year back to Kerman, so yeah, some little privacy might be needed in that time. This is a thing that I uh, think Kerbal Space Program not really models well in regards to real space uh, fairing thing. If you stick three people in a capsule for a year or longer, I'm pretty sure they're dead. Not just because of starvation or oxygen deprivation or anything, but because they would kill each other. Yeah, don't put people into two confined spaces, that's not healthy. Anyhow, we are now back at Kerbin. And thanks to the awesome power of chemical rockets and their higher thrust to weight ratio compared to, compared to the nuclear engines, we got an extremely quick return burn. Uh, return burn, capture burn. And speaking of capture, we need to get the crew back onto the surface. And that's what this little thing is for. You can see me here trying to match the inclination of the Eve 3 mothership uh, already on ascent. Dropping the fairing, which was just there to make the ascent easier. By the way, this thing is designed as an SSTO rocket and also as a reusable rocket, so we're going to try and land this thing back on Kerbin. Alright, closing in. You might have noticed also the docking apparatus on top of that little rocket and that it looks very similar to that of the E3. And here we go. We are now on our way back into the atmosphere and hopefully not burning up in there. Look at that, isn't that nice? Okay, things are heating up. I have aimed sort of for uh, the space center, but we only have about 600 something uh, meters per second of delta V left, so yeah, that correction burn did not work out as I tried, as, as I wanted rather. But yeah, you could swim home. That's close enough, I guess. Okay, here comes the bad part, because... Rockets don't sink into water, they just float a bit and then they tip over. Just like... Yeah, this. And... Hey, we... We, <laughs> we got ourselves a speedboat, because the docking port kind of exploded and the rocket is still firing. But now it's gone. Alright. So 
So that's it for today. If you have enjoyed this, please consider subscribing if you not already have. And stay tuned for more when we once again enter the Shadow Zone. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.